Dear Sư Phụ, if I ask the question, before earth and heaven, what am I? Does that mean I already arise a thought? So, even if this is something that you don't know, it's still meaning that you have arising thoughts because you haven't reached Hoa Thô yet. Even though we haven't reached that Hoa Thô, asking the question will bring it closer to it. So that question is like a, a, a skillful means to bring us from here to where we want to be, which is realizing our self-nature. Even though we haven't reached that hoa thô yet, asking the question meaning we are on the way to to hoa thô. So the doubt is just like a, a vehicle bringing us to hoa thô. So here the master gives an example of Hoa Tho is like a destination we want to reach. And then asking the question, meaning we are on the way to Hoa Tho. So asking the question doesn't mean we reach Hoa Tho yet. However, it it's like a, a vehicle, it's like a skillful means to carry us from where we are to the destination, which is Hoa Tho. So no matter whether it's slow or fast, as long as we maintain the doubt and asking the question, we are on the way to Hoa Tho. So you said that when we ask the question, we should close our eyes and looking at the darkness, but I couldn't close my eyes when I asked the question. I always wanted to open my eye. So you have to, you have to keep the hoa thô in mind as the goal, not the question as the goal. Our goal is to reach Hoa Tho. Asking the question is just the means for us to reach there. So don't use don't use the question as the goal. You have to always remember that. To keep in mind that Hoa Tho is the goal. And always look at Hoa Tho. Lots of practitioners now, nowadays use the question as the goal and thinking that they have the doubt and maintain the doubt but that is that is a mistake that is just that just means that they are looking at the tail of um the tail of the words instead of the beginning of the words I try my best to practice um, even though I haven't had a chance to see you directly I listen to you over um, over the CD and learn a lot about this practice and completely believe in this practice um, 
During my practice, I fall into this fall into this situation. I want to bring it up to you so you can clarify on it. There's one afternoon at 1 p.m. where I feel really hot. When I was practicing, I keep maintaining, I keep asking the doubt and maintain the, keep asking the question and maintain the doubt and keep looking at the darkness. And when I open my eyes, I see that everyone was walking. And I sweat a lot. I, I lose track of everyone. I didn't hear uh, that people were walking and that the master was ringing the bell. Could you, could you explain more? I don't want to make mistake and go in the wrong way. So now if you think, if you know that you are uh, right, that's still wrong. Or if you think you're wrong, that's still right. So uh, doing this practice is to use the unknown to practice. So as long as you have a thought of knowing something, it is not the hoa to. So, so we have to keep maintaining the stage of not knowing anything. Even so, if we know that we are right, it's still a mistake. If we think that we are wrong, it's still a mistake. So, if we think that we are practicing diligently, it's still wrong. If we think that we don't practice diligently, it's still wrong because we use the stage of not knowing. We use the st our stage of not knowing to um, to maintain the doubt. So we we need to practice to keep the stage of not knowing to keep the doubt. But this not knowing is different from when you don't know anything because you are asleep or when we are, we are silly because all of the other stage of not knowing, they don't carry the urge to know versus, versus this stage of not knowing in our practice, we still carry the urge to know something. So to, to know the hoa to. So it's completely different from the other stage of knowing from, from the other not knowing. So this is the principle of the practice. And you can, um, you can find it mentioned in our principle of the patriarch meditation uh, there's some practitioner that follow me for years but still use the question as the goal instead of what hole as the goal they cling on to the question um, they should know that the question is just to borrow temporary to to stimulate the doubt when we reach the hoa to the question should be gone. So the hoa to is just like a, a stick and the doubt is for us to walk. So we're just like a disabled person using the stick to walk. So when we reach the destination, we should let go of the stick because when once we reach the destination, we still carry the stick, it's going to be an obstacle for us. So always make sure that the stick is just help us to walk to stimulate the doubt. 
So now, if we can look at the hoa thô, then we don't need to even ask the question. However, if we cannot, we cannot look at, we cannot focus on the hoa thô, then we have to use the question to help us stimulate the doubt. Ninety-nine percent of people normally will just cling on to the question and use it as the goal. Yeah, like someone followed me for years, but still cling on to the question and use it as the goal, and that is a mistake. So when I was little, I didn't know how to um to to um doubt to keep the doubt and think about the huato. But when I grow up, then I started to ask the question and raise the doubt. So there are a thousands of questions, but there's only one hoa to. We, if we clean on to the questions, we actually practicing at the tail of the words, not the head of the words. Lots of people use the question as the goal and cling on to the question. That means they actually um, practice at the tail of the words and they won't, will never be able to realize their self-nature. The Namo Shakyamuni Buddha, the Master, you teach us to um, ask the question while working, but when we work, we feel so tired. Sometimes we couldn't stimulate our doubt. I didn't teach you to work and, and, and practice at the same time. I only teach you, I told you, like when you work, please don't practice. Like when you work for eight hours to 10 hours, then put down the practice. So, for example, eight to ten hours you practice, but then for you you work then don't practice. But for the six, the other sixteen hour focusing on your practice, then gradually you will automatically start practicing when you're working. So just practice when you don't work. So uh, when we practice while working is when they come to the automatic stage. When they work, they 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 just automatically arise. Um, however, when you haven't reached that automatic stage, then you should stop practice when you work. Thank you for clarify. I I mistake your teaching as always work practice while working and sometimes it affect my work. So so make sure that you practice a lot when you don't work so that when you work it automatically um come you know um. If you don't practice during your free time, then it's really hard for you to 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 automatically arise the doubt when you work. Should I open my eye or close my eye when I practice? What's the meaning of it? So for the one who feels sleepy a lot, then they should open their eyes. For the one that have a lot of the thoughts, then they should close their eyes. For the one that don't either feel sleepy or have a lot of thoughts, then just open their eyes a little bit, you know, um, like open and close their eyes at the same time. Everyone is different.
Dear Master, uh, from the Pure Lane practice, there are nine chapters depending on each person's practice to to gain those chapters. But for for the Patriot Zen, we only talk about realizing our self nature and become the Buddha. So, however, if we don't realize our self nature in this lifetime, when where are we going to after we dead? If till we dead? So, if you have a place to go to, that is not your self nature, because your the self nature, the Buddha nature, is beyond. Uh, time and space, it's all over the place. It doesn't have beginning and ending. It doesn't have birth or death. Just like the pure land is um, they want to reach to where they realize the no birth stage. No, if there's birth, then there's death. If there's beginning, then there's ending. So there will be reincarnation. So the the one who reach enlightenment, they have to be able to realize the no birth stage. Some people, even though they practice the pure land Buddhism, they don't really understand it because if there is if they want to reach no birth stage, then actually there's no way to go, right? Because they actually cling on to the birth, and that's why they have to incur the encounter the death. If there's a place to go to, then it it means that it's not all over the place. It's not beyond time and space. If if it is beyond time and space. There is nowhere to return to or nowhere to go to. So the universe and everything, it doesn't have beginning. It's beginning. Just like I mentioned about the chicken and the egg. If there's birth, then there's the beginning. Can can the chicken be the beginning? No, it's not. Because if there's no egg, then there's no chicken. Can the, can the egg be the beginning? No, we cannot say that. Because if there's no ch the chicken, then there's no egg. So both the chicken and the egg cannot be the beginning. That's why it means like no, no birth. Just like the tree, the tree needs the seed to grow into the tree. So should we say the seed comes first or the tree comes first? None of them could be the beginning, just like the chicken and the egg. They cannot be separate to exist. They are they are both the cause and the effect to each other. So we say we say they are the cause and the condition for each other. But there is no beginning. Uh, the the first cause, because there is no beginning, and we cannot even say that they are natural, because the chicken or the tree cannot automatically exist. So they cannot just exist on their own. So we cannot. They are. We cannot say that they are just natural, or they can, We cannot say that they are from the cause and the conditions because there is no first cause or there is no beginning. So now talk about birth and death. Some people say 
the birth is the beginning and the death is the ending. However, uh, Master Long Ta, who is the 14th patri patriarch of the Indian Zen practice, say that the birth is cannot be the beginning. Because if the birth is the beginning, then it has to be separate and independent from the birth. Just like the chicken has to be separate from the egg to be the beginning, or the egg has to be separate from the chicken to be the beginning. So if, if birth is the beginning, then it has to be separate and independent from the death and exists on its own. However, the truth is the birth depends on the death and it needs the death to, to arise. If there's birth, then there has to be death. They cannot be independent. So if, so if we say ending, uh, sorry, death is the beginning, it's everyone agree that it's unreasonable. But if we say birth is the beginning, it's actually also unreasonable as well. It's not just the animal, even the plants. If there's birth, then it, there has to be death. So there's there's no there should be no beginning. So if there's no beginning, then uh, it's gonna be uh, an illusion to think that we have a place to go to or we have a place to return to. Sometimes it's really hard to explain to the people who practice pure land Buddhism because they they have a lot of attachment to that idea for, for life, so it's really hard to explain to them. What if we don't, re we don't re reach enlightenment this time and we owe, to, we owe a lot of people, what should we do? We have to believe in the cause and effects and the karma. We practice the patriot Zen, it is a, the right cause. So when the right cause, the, when there is the right cause, then the right effect will come. So even if we only practice for one day and we die, since we already plan the good seed, the next life is going to continue until we reach enlightenment. So we right now plan the right, the, the, the good seed, then eventually we will have the good effect, so don't need to worry about it. Um, if, we, if we sow the bad seed, then we will re reap the bad result. So right now, if we uh, uh, we sow the right seed, then one day we will reach liberation. So don't worry about it. Even if we just do the same practice for one day, we already sow a, a good seed. Master, when how long will you be in Vietnam with us? Um, I'm not sure about it. It depends on um, the conditions, maybe four or five months. Um, just like I just come and they asked me to to go with them somewhere, so I'm not sure about it. <laughs> this patriot Zen, if, even if you believe 100%, I would say that 
maybe you only believe half because we, you only believe in the practice, but you don't believe in your own mind. You have to believe 100% in your own mind. Even if you just believe like 99% in your own mind, it doesn't work. You have to believe that your mind is equal to that of the Buddha. Um, and it is no less because even if it's just less for a little bit, then our Buddha nature is not equal to the Buddha nature, right? But that's not true because our nature is equal to the Buddha nature. We are not less than them. We are just equal to them. If we are less or more than the Buddha nature, then that, that means the, the Buddha nature still have reincarnation. So if the Buddha nature still have the reincarnation, then there's no use to to practice to become the Buddha, you know. So you have to believe that your nature is just equal to the Buddha nature and you already have everything within you. Just like Shakyamuni Buddha mentioned in the Yunyak Sutra, every sentient being already became a, the Buddha. Just like the goal, you know, um, um, if the storage doesn't have the goal, doesn't already have the goal, then no matter how we do to it, there won't be goal. Um, but actually, the storage already have goal. It's just because it's um, it's covered by you know, like by other dust and miscellaneous things. So we just need to um, get rid of those um, miscellaneous things for the goal to show. Just like our nature has everything within itself, and we just need to practice to, to realize it, to bring it up. Once we reach Hua Tho, our mind will, will be pure and uh, all of our superpower uh, will be manifested and we'll call to become a Buddha. It doesn't mean that right now we don't have all of those superpower. It just, we have it, but it's just because it cannot be manifested because it has become pure yet. When we practice and reach enlightenment, then all of those power will manifest and show itself. So to, to practice is to realize what we already have. You know, it, does, it doesn't mean that to bring something more. It's just to realize what we already have. Uh, when, when I check the calendar to see when I should become a monk, because it shows which day will be good to become a monk or not, I hesitate because when I read that book, it said this year and next year will be not good for me to become a monk. 
I, I, I know that I should not believe in it, but I still uh, want to clarify with you because I feel like I'm old and I'm not that healthy. So I want to clarify with you. The one who write this book, they actually create, uh, induce a karma that will lead them to hell because they write some about superstitious things that make people, that disillusion people, so that would be um, commit like a, an offense that lead them to hell. Just like I said, the nature, the Buddha nature of everyone has everything within it. Although right now, we are just sentient beings. However, all of the sentient beings already became the already became Buddhas, just like Shakyamuni Buddha mentioned in the Sutra. The book that you just mentioned, it's a super a superstitious thing. It's just to trick the people who doesn't know Buddhism. However, the author of that book already commit the offense that will lead him to the hell. Um, and it's not avoidable because he used his own idea to um, to to distort Buddhism. The one who vowed to become the monk, they have to um, they 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 have to vow to they have to do the they have to initiate the right cause to liberate from birth and death and not because of anything else you know um, if you think that you become a monk because of anything else that is just superstitious so the the master yeah i i know that birth and death is an important matter so i want to be Come a monk to facilitate the practice because at home I am carried away by other people and a lot of not worldly things, so it's really hard for me to practice. It's just a coincidence that I read that book and it made me feel hesitant. However, now that you clarify everything, it I feel um I feel better about it. So to me, some people want to become a monk. I even advise them to not become a monk. Why? Because if you make a vow to practice, then whether you stay at home or you become a monk, it doesn't make a difference. Just like the sixth patriarch in the Platform Sutra said, if you become a monk, but you don't truly practice, then you are even not equal to someone who just stay at home but practice. There's four, there are four things. The, 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 the heart to want to become a monk, but the body stay home. Or or to actually become a monk but the mind stay at home you know so if you become a monk but your heart is at home it doesn't it, it is not as good as if you stay at home but your heart wanted to actually become a monk so the master when I stay at home I help a lot. I help my my kids and my grandkids a lot. I feel like if I leave home, then my kids and my grandkids will not depend much on me. Uh, so 
to be honest, right now, even a lot of people who stay in the temple, right, they receive a lot of、uh, giving from the Buddhists. However, they still worry about their family. So, for example, like some of the, when when the Buddhists give money to them, they use that to take care of their family matters. So they use they take advantage of being a monk to help their family. So doing that, they actually borrow a debt、um, right now, you know, and they have to. Repay it in the future. So I would say, you know, it's better to just stay at home. Some people say it's more convenient to become a monk, right? Even we say so, we don't really, we couldn't really do it. Some people, even though they become a monk, they still worry about their kids and their grandkids. If you become a monk, but you still worry about your family, then you actually borrow a borrow and make a debt from um from the Buddhists who who um who give who offer stuff to you. So if you don't practice diligently, you actually commit an offense that will lead you to hell. So even so even one even when you after you get out of the of hell you even have to go into the animal realm to pay your debt. So to be honest, to stay at home sometimes is even better because if you stay home, right? Even if you don't, you are not successful in your practice. You still don't carry a lot of debt. Right, so only become a monk when you like determine with your life to liberate from birth and death. If you become a monk but you still worry about your family, it's not good for you. Ah,、uh, the master, um, I feel bad for. Um, us as women, when we stay at home, we have to worry about our our parents. When we get married, we have to worry about our kids. And then after our kids get married, we have to worry about our grandkids. That's why、uh, some of them cannot become a a nun. That's why Shakyamuni Buddha in the past didn't allow women to become. Um, the a nun, just like some of the、uh, some of the practice in in some country right now, they still don't allow women to become nun because they said the the mental and the physical state of the woman may cause a lot of turbulence for the sangha. So,、um, it's because of the step mom of the of Shakya Muni Buddha that asked him to become a nun three times, but he still didn't allow to. It's until Ananda begging the Buddha、uh, to let her to become the nun, and that's why the the Buddha create a lot of. Precepts and a lot of rules for the nuns. But right, even right now, some of the nuns still cannot abide to those precepts and the rules. You know, because they they become the nun, but they still worry a lot about their their family. You know, that's why I normally advise the woman to not become a nun. If all of the conditions come together, you know you may not be a woman all the time. You might be. You might transform into a man in another life. 
Uh, so I'm just going to tell a true story. Uh, Mr. Hun Dinh Kien, in the Chinese dictionary, there's this name. He used to be uh, a government official. His past life was a woman, and he practiced at home. So she did uh, cultivation at home without getting married. When she when she was near near her death, she told her mom that I have this uh, I have this box. Now I'm gonna lock it. Next time I will come back to open this box. So. Mr. Hun Dinh Kien is also, also referred to as Tương Phúc. His Buddhist name is Tương, Tương Phúc. He, he is a government official. His birthday, he was celebrating his birthday at noon, and then he was sleep when he taking a nap. He dreamed about going to going to somewhere, going to a house, and meeting an old lady, and that old lady invited him to inside to eat. And when he eat, he asked the lady, after he, he finished eating, he go home and then he wake up and then he feel like why this dream is so real and he's not sure if this dream is, is, is real or not. So he he followed the, the path that he saw in in the the dream and then went to that house by himself to meet the lady the old lady and and he asked her uh, what what happened today and she said it's her daughter's death anniversary her daughter passed away 26 years ago and today is her daughter's death anniversary and then the lady told him about the daughter who practiced and didn't get married. And when she passed away, she left behind a box and said she will, uh, she will herself come back and open the box in her next life. So when when Mr. Hunden King heard about it, he remember his past life and know that he was that her her do the daughter in his past life and the the old lady said you do you know where the key is and he said he know where it is and he went and get the key and opened the box so there were a lot of books in that box those books was made by him um, when he passed the exams, the college exams in the past. So it proved that this old lady is his mom in the past life. So he brought the old lady home and uh, took care of her till she died. So because he he practiced in his past life. That's why this in this lifetime he transformed into a man. And later on he met a Zen master and finally were able to reach liberation. So stay in at home and practice. It's not that hard. It depends on the person whether they have enough determination and 
um, you know, it, uh, you don't have to become a monk to be able to practice. Just like the king, uh, Ung Chính King, he, he, he reached enlightenment, but he still keep being the king or other the master for my situation if I stay at home if my 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 practice will not be as convenient as I become a monk so if you like like you just said if you still believe in the book that said about a good day and bad day to become a monk then how come you, how come you have uh, how come you be you qualify to become a monk. Sorry, I just I just a little bit hesitant when I read that book, you know. But now since you since you you explain that, I think I should not become a monk, you know. Yes, maybe staying at home is better than become a monk because you want you want all the debt to the people who offer who offer to the temple. Everything is created by the mind. You know, if you have that um, determination to become a monk, even if you cannot do it in this lifetime, you can. You will be able to do it in the next lifetime. 